What's up guys? We are back with another Masters of the Universe Masterverse review, taking a look at another Wave 3 figure and a female this time around, though one female uh, that's in this wave. We're taking a look at Andra this time. So uh, we've gotten, what, Evil Lynn in Wave 1, we've got Tila in Wave 2, and then Andra gives us another female in Wave 3. So of course she comes in uh, standard style packaging for this line, so the same stuff we've seen throughout all the waves. Uh, figure there in the big window, you've got the Eternian hieroglyphs uh, kind of theme going around this box. You've got her name there on the bottom. You've got her name running down the side panel. And then the other side panel has a shot of her uh, with that mask from, what, the second episode? And then the back of the box has a larger shot of her uh, blasting with a bio. And then you've got a cross cell for the rest of Wave 3. So let's do it. Let's pull her out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Andra figure. So maybe the one that people are going to be least excited about when it comes to this wave, at least just based on my own expectations of what people are truly after with this particular line. But, just like with Evil Lynn, I think they are really nailing the female figures. And, you know, she may not be high on anyone's priority list as far as character goes. I'm sure she is on someone's. But this is a really solid figure. Like, they've done a pretty good job with this one. Outside of what is kind of a, uh, a wonky... Uh, cape here. It's not it's not bad, but it's it's weird and and it's it's kind of awkward to use. So uh, I'm going to take the cape off of her to do articulation, and then we'll put it back on and, and talk about her. So it's it's really odd because it's like a cape and a scarf at the same time. So there's all these little extra bits of fabric hanging down. Um, so as far as moving her around, I mean she is going to be pretty much exactly what you expect. If you have Evil Lynn, you you kind of know what you're getting into here. Uh, so the head can look up slightly, not much. She can look down a decent bit though. You've got tilt side to side, full rotation. Arms out at the shoulders. They do rotate all the way around, but she has the shoulder cuffs, so they're gonna get in the way. So she goes, you know, fully forward and backward. That's usually enough. We've got our bicep swivel. You've got double jointed elbows, pinless double jointed elbows on a female figure. And then we've got hinges and rotation at that wrist. We've got a diaphragm cut for her uh, twist, right, uh, in conjunction with a waist swivel. Uh, so she can twist all the way around, and she's got a little bit of bobble back and forth, side to side. Not too much. Like it's not, not overly articulated there, um, but she does have some good tilt otherwise. Legs go out about that far. Not the full splits, but pretty far. She kicks forward. She kicks backward really good. She's got a thigh cut. We've got pinless double jointed knees. They go back all the way. And then you've got a boot cut. It's pretty high. Like that's a, it's a, that's like a lower knee cut almost, but it, it, it's functional. And then we've got really good rocker, nothing in the way, and then hinges uh, down at those ankles. So, I mean, she's she is as articulated as Evil Lynn really, uh, which is to say she is pretty well articulated, no issues here. She moves pretty fluidly, uh, nothing stuck, nothing in the way. The only real hindrance is probably that diaphragm cut where it's not all that usable, but overall she is uh, really nicely put together. Now aesthetically, she is also really solid. There's there's not a lot that I would really consider worth complaining about on this figure when it comes to the base figure. You know, colors are really nice. Uh, she does have a lot going on. She's a pretty busy figure. But that's that's her look in many ways. You know, she's got her blaster on her wrist here, which does have effect parts. So she's got a port there. Uh, we've got varying levels of black and brown and green and, and yellow. She does have a lot of colors. You know, again, she is kind of busy. She does have a very uh, obvious uh, trademark stamp on her back there, which I've never been a fan of some of the places Mattel puts that stuff, but it's right there. Uh, she does have kind of an obvious, very uh, ugly looking knee joint from the back. But overall... I think she looks pretty good and, and pretty close to the source material. Colors are are really nice because a lot of this is molded plastic in many places. There is some paint, uh, but a lot of it is molded plastic too, like the knee pads are, uh, the gauntlet is, and things like that. The, she's got her little uh, bandolier here. We've got a floating piece for the belt. So this actually hides that waist twist really nicely. doesn't really need to. It would, it would have been hidden pretty well by the you know, the hips area in general, but it completely removes that cut. And ultimately, there's two big things about this figure that are, are worth mentioning. The first is, is the head sculpt, because the body is the body. It looks good, proportions are all right, colors are all right, uh, sculpt is pretty good, but the head sculpt on this figure 
it is pretty solid. Like this, this is a really good female head sculpt. Uh, it's a really good interpretation of her. So just like Evil Lynn, you know, it's another instance where they've really done a good job uh, kind of capturing that animation look and kind of drawing it into, into plastic. The hair is really nicely sculpted. And just the overall expression, it's kind of stoic, you know, there's not a lot of emotion to it, but at the same time, it's it's not some ridiculous, you know, yelling pose or anything like that. The eyes are really clean and crisp, the, the lips are, are a little bit glossy, so it, you know, it looks like they have a little bit of a sheen to them, and then the uh, overall sculpt and proportions on it just they just look good I, i've been pretty happy with with most of the heads in this line and there's a couple not uh, notable exceptions namely the titular character of 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 masters of the universe but uh but this is another one of those that kind of goes up to the top of the list i think the head sculpt is really solid on her and then lastly we have the soft goods and these are they're interesting. I don't know if I want to say they're bad. Uh, I don't know if I really want to say they're good. They are different. So you've got, this is like, you know, her cloaked robe, which honestly, it's not too bad. You know, you can get it to kind of drape over her and it'll sort of cinch and it looks all right. Like it hangs on her really well. And the material is slightly more plush than I was expecting. It, it doesn't look all that much good from the inside, but from the back, it's got like a kind of velvety look and feel to it. But it's also supposed to be like a scarf too. And that's why you've got these long fringes and they're, it's not good, it's not bad, it's kind of weird, it's kind of awkward. And it, it's just a lot of material that you have to sort of wrap around her face and tuck it under itself so that you can uh, get it to sort of cinch down over top of her. And then it's all kind of like bunched up on the back. I wish these were a little bit uh, thinner because the, the arms of the scarf piece are of course a different, uh, stitched material on top of the cape so it does feel like it could have been a little bit smaller but it's not so bad it's just it's just kind of a weird one like this is definitely a weird cape you know i've never had to wrap something like this around a figure's uh, face before or to have them draped down or anything like that so it's not good it's not bad it's just different and weird but overall like when you take it at face value i think the soft goods on this actually feel nice and they they do hang pretty well she has a lot of hair going back you know because her hair is kind of pulled up in a, in a small ponytail so it does kind of elongate the hood on it and it kind of stretches things out but when you want to like drape things over her you can do it relatively easily. The only real downside, of course, is that, you know, this is a retail release, so there is uh, there is no wire on this cape. So you're gonna have to deal with that. I wish it was wired. If the scarf aspect was wired, it would be a non-issue and kind of a no-brainer on how to mess around with this. So you're gonna have to play with it. And you may not even need it for what you're gonna display it for. You know, you might not use it at all, but it is an interesting idea when it comes to how to, uh, to cloak her and then to give her that scarf effect since it's all one piece of material. Now, as far as accessories goes, Andra has a decent amount. It's not tons and tons and tons, but it's a decent amount. And she does come with a few of the things that I wish uh, all of the figures in this line would have. And that is an appropriate and equal number of hands for each type of hand that you get. Uh, so we have a bunch of hands in this box and then we've got a head and an effect part. So we're gonna do the hands real quick. So she's got fists on her in the box. She comes with a set of style pose hands. So just like slightly open palm, slightly relaxed hands. And then you get a set of gripping hands as well. So she has three total sets of hands and you know, it's she doesn't have one of those weird chopping hands that all the other figures, the males in, in particular, have. And then she's got an effect part. So we've got an energy blast to go on the gauntlet that I men mentioned previously. Uh, so it's just you know, sort of this like uh, candy, hot pink almost color, and it pops into the port on her wrist. And I do like that. I mean, I'm always a fan of energy effects, especially when they have a weapon on their body that uses it. You know, it makes perfect sense to be included. And then we have, at last, her alternate head sculpt. And this is that mask, that helmet that she and Tila wear uh, when they're, what, in episode two in particular, where they're fighting Stinkor. So it's got like, and I really like this, just point blank, I really like this design. I thought it was a really cool design in the show. Uh, it, I get like some serious Snake Man vibes out of this thing. Whether that's intentional or not, I don't know, but it looks slightly reptilian to me. And then you've got uh, you know, this like two-tone dark green, light green with the yellow eyes, and then this tubing that goes around for kind of like the resp respirator system that it has. And of course, this can also be used um, with 
the soft goods because of course they're wearing they're wearing them when this happens so you know you can pop this on and i think this actually works uh really really well with the soft goods in particular and i'm just going to haphazardly throw them on here at the moment and just sort of do it but i think she looks i think she looks pretty cool this way honestly like you know kind of shroud her head a little bit and then you've got some very mysterious type of character. So if you maybe, you know, maybe you're one of those folks out there who doesn't really care about this particular figure. I know that's, I know I've, I've said that a few times and I know there's definitely a few folks out that are gonna feel that way about this one. You could change her up to the point where, you know, she just looks like some cool kind of mercenary or something like that. And I really like the idea behind this. Again, you know, the soft goods are kind of wonky. They are hard to utilize, I think, and you have to kind of get them down correctly. If there was a wire in there, it would be an absolute game changer. But I think for the most part, it does its job pretty well. And it works really nicely in conjunction with this head sculpt in particular because she doesn't have all that hair popping out the back, so it keeps the hood down a little bit better. And then, of course, you know, you've got a bunch of other stuff here for her. So she's got her effect part for her weapon, and then she's got the extra hands. So there is a decent amount of stuff in there in the box, and especially if you count this as an accessory because, you know, technically speaking, kind of is. Uh, she is uh, pretty well rounded out. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this one. I know I've said it a handful of times that I know that this is probably going to be the figure that is not as readily scooped up when it comes to this uh, particular wave because she's a character that most folks don't necessarily know and have a history with. She's definitely more, more so focused on uh, new stuff rather than pulling on the nostalgia strings, but She's a really solid figure, just like Evil Lynn in Wave 1, and, you know, again, I haven't messed with Tila yet still. Uh, she is a really well-articulated figure, which is just nice to see. She's got a really cool design. She has an awesome alternate head sculpt if you want to change her up. If you want to throw those soft goods on her, you know, play around with them, but you can get them to work really nicely. She's got an effect part, and she has a solid amount of hands. So, ultimately, there's a lot of good stuff in this box whether you care about this character or not. So uh, that's going to do it for this look at the Masters of the Universe, Masterverse Andra. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.